Us here at WDTN and Dayton CW continue our Wait to Text It campaign. That's why we have on these these bands on our fingers. Last year, we were the first at Dayton station to go into our schools to help teen drivers stay safe. The message is one a Green County family hopes you hear loud and clear. Holly Samuels shows you why they'll never forget the fatal mistake that took their son away. Uh, Evan was so proud of this farm. He and I knew every bump, every branch, you know, every rock. Uh, hundreds of hours out here. The boys grew up out here. Each of us have special memories um, and thoughts about being out here. The Wildman family farm sits atop a Clark County hill, nestled in the trees down a long lane on Selma Pike in Clark County, just outside South Charleston. The cabin itself dates back to 1815. It's been in Austin Wildman's family for generations. My son's uh, uh, with the seventh generation Wildman boys to, to live on this farm. Eben, here on the right, was the athletic one, three years older than his brother Maxwell, the free spirit with the long blonde hair. It used to be when we were kids, we didn't, he wouldn't like to take me anywhere, or, you know, we wouldn't, he wouldn't like to spend much time with me, but as we grew up and as we, we had about a year in high school together, and uh, as I got older, uh, we started to enjoy each other's presence a little bit more. And Evan, the junior Olympic skeet shooter, learned his craft here, leaving his parents with lasting memories. There was a tree stand out there, and, and uh, he said, Mom, I'm going out to, I'm gonna go out to hunt. With the camo outfit and an orange hat and orange gloves and a gun on his, over his shoulder, uh, walking out into the woods. Uh, he had his camos on, and I think he was about seven. The Wildmans now come to this peaceful place to reflect, reflect on a life lost. I could see the flashing lights ahead on the road. When I got to the intersection and the roadblock and I could see the flashing lights up ahead, I just had that funny feeling that something wasn't right. The Wildman family was shattered in October of 2010. 20-year-old Eben was home on break while serving as a midshipman with the ROTC from Miami University. He and some buddies went to, uh, they were going out to Dayton and to see friends and uh, so they coalesced, they gathered at my place and uh, in Yellow Springs and then took off from there and, and uh, I remember the car driving. They turned, kind of went down the street, turned around, left, waved, and uh, that was the last that I saw of him. Evan was the designated driver that night. He dropped off his friends, but never made it back to his mom's house. The next morning, Sarah Wildman stumbled upon the crash scene on State Route 343 in Miami Township. So I turned around and headed back to Yellow Springs to go a different route. And uh, that was when I got the call to come to the police station. I said, does this have anything to do with an accident up on 343? And she said, just come here. So I knew. Uh, he was texting a young lady he'd been with earlier in the evening and uh, lost control, went off to the right, overcorrected, and rolled his car in, uh, off the road and um, into a tree and was killed instantly. Uh, he would text, well, would try to text while he was, he was driving, and I'd put a stop to that. And then uh, I can hear him say, Dad, or Pops, uh, this isn't my first rodeo. And I would say, Evan, stop it, put that away. Mom, <laughs> relax, this isn't my first rodeo. Yeah. I would tell him that if you, you know, you do stupid things like texting, it's going to be your last rodeo. Austin Wildman no longer lives on the family farm, but he comes here often, driving the grounds, now on his own. Uh, I guess we go on with life, uh, playing the cards we're dealt, but uh, there, isn't a, <clears throat> there isn't a day since October 16th that I have not had a, a wet eye about it. I think of it as the... When you go to the carnival and you swing the mallet and you hit the thing and the little dinger goes up and rings the bell. And, uh, you know, the bell rang for me all the time. It just rang for me all the time. 
and it's hard to get the bell to ring now. You know, it's hard to get right up there to the top. I just uh, pray that the kids will somehow grasp the grasp the idea that they're not immortal and it can be killed and it's a, not a it's not a pretty death it's a very ugly death and um, it just I, I wish it somehow could be stopped I know there's a really good way to learn not to do that and that's to have something awful happen like an accident like someone dying that's a great way to learn but how do you send the message without tragedy? It's a tough one. Very powerful message. That was Holly Samuels reporting. And it is because of stories like this that 2 News continues our Wait to Text campaign.